so this there's a lot actually happened even before this this is just the first time that they they made the card you were at man united as well and and you played for hull and um, but at man united as we already discussed you you had a pretty impressive like, youth team you played with it was johnny evans danny simpson Darren Gibson, uh, Giuseppe Rossi, Gerard Piquet, Ryan Shawcross. You mentioned that uh, Gerard Piquet there. I mean, are you surprised that he didn't stay at United, that he didn't go on to success there? Obviously, he's Spanish, so you, mm. you, I'm used was used to playing with you know English um, lads in the youth setup. So when you know you see the centre back that's doing like tricks and flicks and stuff before like training and stuff like you think oh, this guy's got a bit so it's you know it's all in a matter of time before he he got a chance you know i just had to give him that gentle push in the right direction you're such a, <laughs> a guiding hand to all these players speaking it's of so <laughs> <laughs> like you said earlier as well with uh, cristiano ronaldo i mean we have to ask about playing with him i mean what was he like at that age he was he was out there early um early than everyone else do the training session then after he'd he'd get a bag of balls and you know he'd, he'd practice his, either his free kicks or he'd just take a ball and go dribbling around like eight of the pitches just you know just practicing his little tricks and and touching and stuff like that uh i mean there, there was other people there that were like established in the team like at, at that stage though like wayne rooney paul skulls ryan Giggs. i mean as a young player in that team, was it intimidating playing with people like that? As well as being a Man United fan myself, it was, it was massive, um, massively intimidating. Um, not in a not in a horrible way, you know. They weren't being mean. It was just it, it meant so much to be, you know, considered um, part of of the team. There was massive pressure. I used to hate going out there to train. The first five ten minutes, I used to hate it, thinking, "Oh God." I hope I'm having a good day today. But you know, <laughs> after that, try and warm up and enjoy it. Because then if you did something good and they're like, you, you, you don't realise how much it means to to get a, oh, well done phrase from, I don't know, Roy Keane or something like that. You know, it's yeah. a massive boost. Also on the slide here as well, we've you played for Hull City as well. And the, the season they got promoted uh, to the Premier League. Well, I think I went there just after the win uh, just after the cup so it might be in October time November mm. time went there these guys are a lot of them were it was an older squad um, they've been a stab like Dean was 38 at the time so a proper old boys gang and they're looking at me thinking here we go Man United lad he's going to come in here and you know, I think he's the dogs or whatever. I scored two goals on the first on the home game and you know I think from there they start to to see that you know I wasn't here just to make the numbers up. How much credit do you take for that goal in the final as well. All of it, basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> as much as I can get. <laughs> no, it just, it's Dean. He's, he was a great finisher throughout his career. A, a sweet volley into the top corner. And lad from Hull, 38 years of age. Mm. On to the next one then. Pace is down a little bit. I don't know, I've lost pace. I don't <laughs> understand that already. But no, we'll just slide past that. My yeah. pass is improved. That's good. Uh, yeah, my shoe has gone down. According to them, I did not make this, so I don't know what's happened <laughs> at Sunderland. Was it um, tough moving from Hull after like the enthusiasm of getting promoted? But I suppose you were still in the Premier League anyway. But uh, how was it going into that Sunderland team? I was at Man United, and um, the current situation was uh, like too many world-class strikers ahead of me. Mm. And, I, and after, like you said, that season at Hull, um, I played a lot of games, and then the season after, I went on loan to Spurs didn't play as much as I wanted and I wanted to just get back to that feeling that I had um, when I was at Hull. So Jordan Henderson was part of that Sunderland side. Did you did you offer him a guiding hand in training as well? Or uh... <laughs> It's funny you should say that. Jordan's, I'm still good friends with Jordan now. So I used to pick him up from his mum's house, take him to training, you know, just helping him be on time. <laughs> That's why he's such a great leader now. He's, he learned the basics early doors um but no he's again he was one of them guys um always there um before everyone else and he was always there well after everyone else had gone um everything he did uh, his day-to-day -day life revolved around becoming a better player i think it was against liverpool where that um mysterious beach ball goal was scored do you remember that if it had been anyone else that scored it it would have been like what was that but it was bent it was darren yeah. bent that's what he did. Yeah. If there was a, 
if we was in training, we could have the ball could be nowhere near him. It could hit someone's shin, fly off someone's heel, hit him in the head, and it would go in. It's just <laughs> right. So shooting's gone back up. Yeah, I yeah. just don't know where I lost my pace. Where did my pace go? <laughs> <laughs> still nice. I'm, I'm happy with that. It was in between this time uh, you had a pretty long-term injury, which I imagine is just like worst-case scenario for a pro footballer like yourself. For me, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm very close uh, with my family, my brothers, sister, um, my aunties and uncles, you know, my friends. So they were a massive part in it. But it's around that time that I joined um, Twitter. So I joined okay. Twitter around that time and it was... Just the interaction with the fans, you know that sometimes when you when you're not playing, but I'm going obviously I'm going to all the games. It's you know you hear like the good times, everyone's celebrating. Oh, did you see that pass from so and so? Did you see that goal from so and so? It's mm. you feel a bit left out, and that was a way that I felt like I was still connected. I mean, it was around this time though as well. You you um you got a call up to the England squad. How was that? Was that a shock when you received the call or? No, nah, it was a sh- because, like I said, I've been out for um, 18 months. Mm. I played in the Cup in January or February. I think Capello just left and Stuart Pierce, who was the 21s uh, coach, who loved mm. me, um, was um, he got the job for, you know, temporary. So when the manager told me, Martin O'Neill told me at the time, I was, I was thinking, is he joking? You know, it was a time where it was, you know, you're only playing for England if you play for Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool. So to be at Sunderland, like I said, Sunderland not played for a long time and get the call up, it was, you know, it was, it made, it made them last 18 mm. months a lot less painful. Is it true your first child was born the night of your England appearance as well? Yeah. Wow. So my daughter, my eldest, eight years, eight years old, so it was eight years ago. So um, she was born around the say about the time I was I came on the pitch apparently so yeah it was it was a leap year it was 29th of Feb um, the one day that I wanted and she, <laughs> she jumps on it like she does now she jumps on my computer um, takes over <laughs> so can't have anything so so here you're at uh, you're at Cardiff now at this stage yeah um, it was it was one of them feelings you know sometimes you, you, you're at a club and you, you go into a game and you just think we're going to win this um, there was just no fear. There was no, you know, no doubt in the mind. It was ten points clear or something at one stage, and uh, getting promoted with uh, six games or five games to spare or something like that. You uh, you played under Solskjaer at Car- at Cardiff as well. So obviously I played with him. Um, of course, yeah. At, uh, at Man United, and I played in his testimony. If you ever speak to him, ask him about that. Scott, okay. <laughs> I scored a. I a um, we played for his testimony. We played Atletico Madrid, okay. and it was he had it in pre-season as a bit of a friendly get to you know to get everyone fit. And I um, got slipped in, and he was there to my side, so I could have passed him the ball, you know, for his testimony one 0 But I just, I just think the keeper instead. Funnily <laughs> <laughs> enough, he didn't celebrate with me, but you know, it's one of them things. Like I said, it was a bit strange because he was his my teammate, uh, Eggs teammate. Mm. Uh, he always studied the game. He'd sit there and, you know, it's one of the things he said to me, just if you know, not playing, just analyze defenders, figure out, you know, what they're doing during the game. If they if they look like they don't want to go down the left side, the right side, then just play off the shoulder that the weakest turn up. You know, it's always going to stand him in good stead when he, he eventually turned it in, into management. Uh, okay, on to the next card then. I'm happy with that. I could have yeah. smiled in a picture, but you know, <laughs> looking a bit round as well. <laughs> Must have had a good summer. <laughs> <laughs> how did uh, how did you find it at Palace? You were under a, a, a couple of managers there at the time. I think that was the main thing. The, the, the amount of managers we had there was mm. you know, made it difficult to to get a good run of games. The team thing I only played maybe three or four games in a row max. Tony Cooley signed me. Mm-hmm. And then two weeks later, we left the club. So it was like, uh, and you got to the FA Cup final with uh, Crystal Palace there as well. Um, were you annoyed not to play because you'd, you'd been playing in the run-up to the final? Yeah, you know, yeah. Is that the lack of consistency? Yeah. You mean um, it, I was in the cup team because I didn't play much that season. So mm-hmm. I was in the cup team, played all the round, uh, all the rounds up till the final, and. You know, got to Wembley and just got pushed to the side. So sat in the sat in the stand and watching the final. Obviously, still supporting the lads. Really wanted them to win, but 
you know, I think it would have win would have made it that little bit easier for me. But you know, we we lost the game, and it's you know, it's felt like a bit of a kick in the teeth. It was a hard to watch Pardew do that dance as well. I mean, yeah, it would have been a good dance. It'd have been all right. But, um, <laughs> I think it was yeah. hard for most people to watch that dance. Let's see. Pace is gone. <laughs> Pace just fell off the face of the earth. What what does it do? <laughs> Who did I upset? <laughs> this is your second spell at Hull. Um, yeah. You got there after they've been relegated. Is it tough coming into a club that's just been relegated to get the motivation back up? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I've, I've from an outsider, you, you go there thinking, you know, this team just come down, so they've got going to keep. They've kept a lot of the players. They're, they're going to have the same focus and and you know the same drive to to go to go straight back up. So it was. You know, I've been there before. I uh, knew what the club was about, so I thought, you know, go there and hopefully try and get another promotion. But um, mm. it didn't work out like that. Um, it takes its toll getting relegated. Um, yeah. You know, it, it drains. It drains you a lot, and you know, the, the getting out of that routine of you know, like like I was talking about before, where you was at Cardiff, going into the game thinking, yeah, we're going to win this game. You go to a state place where you think one thing goes wrong you think oh god we're going to lose this game so it's it's hard to change that mentality right last card here we go this is rock bottom <laughs> <laughs> but overall you're back at your boyhood club are you pretty happy about that does that feel like a, a nice yeah. nice place to be at this point in your career yeah I grew up in Huddersfield so it's nice to be uh, playing in here uh, not a lot of uh, my friends and family and my neighbours growing up and stuff like that are all massive Huddersfield Town fans so it's, it's always nice to see some of them the amount of times I've got on the stage and say oh yeah no your dad tell your dad Steve said hello alright Steve <laughs> definitely tell him the manager at the moment he um, used to work with Bielsa we, uh, do, do you see any of his influence in, in the football that he's that he's uh He's got you playing these days. We watched Leeds, um, obviously played against Leeds last season, watched Leeds a lot in the Premier League this year and I can see uh, their, their high intensity, high work rate, man for man kind of marking is similar to, to what we're doing here. So it's, you know, as, as a football player, as a manager, coach or whatever you're doing, you're always trying to learn, mm. take the positives away from, you know, your previous season or your previous job or your, your boss or whatever. You're trying take things from them that you know you, you think work and it's just a shame there's, there's no fans to come and you know watch it live because we're playing some some really um, attractive stuff at the minute uh, one random question as well uh, you mentioned them earlier but do you think I look like Jonathan Hogg because it comes up <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little curl he's got when he lets his hair get long two weeks ago he had his hair like that yeah you could be his um Brother, we need to check, speak, yeah. speak to your parents. Maybe they yeah. cross paths. <laughs>